Madagascar is a place unlike any other. Separated from the rest of the world for over a hundred million years, it's home to a staggering array of unique plants and animals, making it one of the world's most important biodiversity hotspots. The island's incredible abundance of flora and fauna doesn't finish at its shores. Madagascar's waters support one of the largest coral reef systems in the world and a rich diversity of marine life. Semi-nomadic communities in the southwest coastal region, known as the Vesu, or people of the sea, have strong cultural ties to the ocean and depend entirely on the marine environment for food and income. Due to their extreme isolation, they lack access to even the most basic of health services. Driven largely by an unmet need for family planning services, the population of these coastal communities was increasing rapidly. Women were having an average of seven children, maternal and infant mortality was extremely high, and the population was predicted to double every 10 to 15 years. Overfishing, along with threats such as climate change, is degrading the marine environment upon which traditional Vesu livelihoods depend. And the situation is compounded by the lack of livelihood alternatives in the region. Marine conservation organization Blue Ventures is supporting communities to respond to these interconnected challenges in an integrated way. This approach reflects the inextricable links between people, their health and the environment. Blue Ventures has supported the development of a locally managed marine area called Volundriac, which means to live with the sea. Communities work cooperatively to outlaw destructive fishing practices and set up marine reserves. This protects the marine environment whilst helping to sustain the fisheries upon which their livelihoods depend. In direct response to the huge unmet family planning needs that these communities expressed, and in a bold move for a conservation organisation, Blue Ventures also started to offer voluntary family planning services. This programme is known locally as Safidi. Safid freedom to choose. In addition to outreach clinics run by the midwife, local women have been trained to offer family planning advice and services in their villages. In remote areas where access is limited and trained health professionals are few and far between, this provides a valuable way of reaching communities with health care. Maro zany tifi fana ny azo, mikasiky fana zampiteraha, maro, bako mikasiky ny fasalamana reny sy ny zaza ary mikasiky fasalamana. Ka maha panentana nay zao amin'izao fotoana tsy mijano amin'ny panentana avao fa miasa koa zany zahay le arahangasa zany raha io. Hello, on behalf of Blue Ventures, and the Inspire Consortium, welcome to this Tokotelo event. 
part of our series of interactive online conversations with the aim of sharing experiences to foster better community-led conservation. Thank you all for joining us today as we discuss how can we strengthen health environment partnerships to maximize impact for coastal communities. I'm Vic Mohan, the Director of Community Health at Blue Ventures. Tokutelu is a Malagasy term for the three stones that hold up a cooking pot. It's used in Madagascar when multiple stakeholders must come together and share with one another to achieve something that no single group could achieve on their own. That tradition of sharing and collaborating is at the heart of this series of events and underpinned the work of the Aspire Consortium. At Blue Ventures, we work with coastal communities to rebuild fisheries to protect ocean life and we recognize the interconnectedness of human and ocean health. We've witnessed firsthand how acting holistically to address the needs of coastal communities not only improves community health and enables them to rebuild fisheries, it also enables them to better respond to climate-related shocks and stresses. This year, 2022, is the year of artisanal fisheries and aquaculture, and one of the seven pillars of the Global Action Plan relates to resilience. At Blue Ventures, our approach to fostering resilience has been to facilitate the formation of partnerships with like-minded organisations who can bring services and expertise, such as sexual and reproductive health services, to the communities that we work with. As you'll know, coastal communities are among the most vulnerable to climate change. Madagascar is currently experiencing a particularly brutal cyclone season, something that we're seeing with increasing frequency. Supporting communities to navigate these extreme weather events is essential. We cannot hope to achieve our conservation and livelihood goals otherwise. We've been very fortunate um, to collaborate with wonderful partners under the recently completed Aspire project. This project focuses on the intersectionality between sexual and reproductive health, resilience to climate change and biodiversity conservation. Aspire aims to strengthen community resilience to climate change through deepening integration between conservation and sexual and reproductive health programming and finding innovative ways to, of reaching the hardest to reach with sexual and reproductive health services. Three of these wonderful collaborators representing the Madagascar PHE network, Mary Stokes Madagascar and Think Place will be forming our panel today. During the first, during the first live stream half of the event, they will present followed by a question and answer session where you'll have the opportunity to submit questions. To ask a question, please use the YouTube comments if you're watching on YouTube or the Q&A box if you're with us in AirMeet. Feel free to type your questions throughout the panel presentations as well as during the Q&A session and we'll collect them and put them to the panelists. All comments made this way will be public and are attributable to you. After the panel, we'll break out into smaller facilitated groups here, we'll be able to share our own ideas and experiences of cross-sectoral programming and explore how what we have heard might be relevant to our work. If at any point you encounter a technical problem, please send an email to digital at blueventures.org. At the end of the event, there'll be a short feedback questionnaire. We'd really appreciate you taking a moment to fill this in. And now I'm delighted to invite to the virtual stage, the coordinator of the Madagascar PHE Network, my friend and colleague, Nantinaina Andrea Malala, who will present how, under the Aspire project, we explored how to, improve, how to improve climate resilience by strengthening health environment partnerships. Over to you, Nantinaina. Thank you, Vic. Um, hey, everyone. Um, uh, it's always a pleasure to share with a large public and um, discuss around the integrated approach uh, with our community uh, partners and stakeholders. Uh, today, I'm going to present uh, innovative approaches to strengthen health environment programming um, and uh, climate uh, resilience. Next slide, please. Um, I will introduce uh, the Madagascar Population Health uh, Environment Network, uh, which uh, was created from Blue Ventures uh, Initiative in uh, to, uh, 2014 uh, through a national workshop in Madagascar, uh, between, uh, bringing together policymakers, uh, health NGOs, 
uh, environmental NGOs as well, and funders. Uh, member of a network includes conservation organization, health organization, program, uh, key ministries uh, like uh, health ministries, Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Population, Ministry of Water and Gen and Sanitation. Uh, the vision of a network um, is uh, for the PHC holistic approach to become the default model for conservation programming uh, in Madagascar, leading to healthy communities uh, living in a healthy environment with resilience and uh, sustainable uh, livelihoods. Uh, for Madagascar in particular, the main model to implement the approach is through uh, partnership, which means uh, a conservation organization working in partnership with uh, a health organization or health program uh, to improve both community health and well being and for a sustainable. Uh, marine resource management. Uh, currently, we have uh, 25 active partnerships. As I said, uh, the partnership is the main model for implementation. We have 12 uh, partnerships in development, and uh, we are now reaching uh, more than 600,000 uh, people uh, to date. Um, next slide, please. If you talk about the add value of the approach, uh, we could say it greatly contributes to strengthen uh, communities' resilience as the access to quality health services, livelihood diversification, uh, the engagement of individual and group, and having the skills are keys to uh, face climate shock. And you know from the introduction, Madagascar is one of the most vulnerable uh, to climate change. Next slide, please. Under the ASPI project, the innovation aspect is part of the integration of climate change resilience with existing population health and environment programming, so including conservation and sexual reproductive health rights. As you can see, uh, we have defined four main activities which have been implemented, which have not been implemented uh, elsewhere in the country and in other countries, probably from what we know. Uh, and realistic activity as well, according to the remaining timeline after the notice of closure of the program. Uh, in overall, we aim to document as much as possible uh, to have a better understanding of the impact of shocks like flooding in the north, trough in the south the difference of impact on geographic area uh, in the country, as well to identify the gap on the capacity related to link on climate change and uh, sexual reproductive health rights, including uh, messages and materials, uh, mainly making the link, highlighting the links between the climate change uh, resilience and sexual reproductive health as we uh, are talking about and um, to identify the, the gap around the capacity of partners implementation side and around the relevant actors as well uh, working in this area um, collecting their experiences identifying the gap and the capacity needs and the existing pools next slide please after some change the process included a phase of uh, collecting key information on the most relevant actors in the areas. And for the process, we have identified uh, main sector related to the integration, including um, like climate smart agriculture, agroecology, uh, climate integration, um, uh, environment, climate change, and emergency responses. Uh, demographic dividends, family planning, sexual reproductive health, the value chain approach, uh, and the natural resources management in practice. And last, the integration of uh, gender approach, which is related to uh, this holistic approach. We conducted a series of interviews of key informants and experts within partners' organization to document their ideas, thoughts, and experiences on how to address challenges with, within this program and uh, to identify opportunities uh, for collaboration in the different regions of uh, Madagascar. Next slide, please. 
One part of the program as well was to identify innovative actions to reach uh, last mile communities. We know the context as, and challenges in this isolated place in the country, uh, difficult to access due to the infrastructure, insecurity in the, in the South, uh, especially uh, limited access to information. And from a survey and a briefing workshop with few partners, some action could be explored uh, to reach for uh, isolated communities, as you can see. However, the limit of capacity of transportation is still a question and funding uh, opportunity who can support on this possibility. Uh, private sectors could play as well a key role uh, on that aspect, adverse subsidies and obligation of result. This will be part of the corporate social responsibilities, uh, of course. Uh, we note that phase ideas are uh, initial thought and could be explored as pilot activities to learn more. Uh, next, next slide, please. From the process interviews, documentation and learning, uh, four crucial recommendations emerged from a better, more effective collaboration regarding the implementation of integrated approach. First, uh, there is a need to build a shared understanding first uh, to strengthen ownership of the approach. Uh, it is necessary to start by clarifying a common definition of uh, integrated approach, its components and their function that is mutually understood. Then, um, it is as well important to share relevant and up-to-date information sometimes the lack of uh, information uh, is a challenge uh, to, uh, between collaboration and to identify actors acting in the same sector uh, and in complementary sectors as well, to identify and use the role of the government uh, to facilitate information and uh, messaging across sector. Uh, the next recommendation is uh, to, to put the community at the center of of uh, integrated approach. Uh, this is uh, fundamental to understand the needs, the challenges and context of communities where intervention will take place uh, through the community engagement and uh, as well to identify uh, in advance the opportunities and activities developed by the community themselves in the relevant sector. And last uh, but not least is to identify the activities already underway in the areas and sectors in the integrated approach to co-create structures and tools for work and coordination and to develop alliance with the private sector, as I have mentioned earlier, to strengthen the value chain of income generating activities as tool for resilience. Um, these tips are addressed to organizations already working directly or indirectly with the sector of conservation, sexual reproductive health rights and resilience working with a population impacted by um, climate change. Um, so this is uh, it for me. Um, I'm giving back the floor to you, Vic. Thank you all. Thanks, Natanina. Um, and so some of the things I take away from what you shared, you know, really resonated with me. So the idea of building a shared understanding of the value of cross of integrated cross sector programming. I mean, I guess unless you have that shared understanding as a foundation, it's going to be difficult to get, as you say, the buy-in and the ownership from partner organisations to, to really commit to um, to to uh, you know a, a cross sector collaboration. So that shared understanding feels very important. It was nice to hear you bring in the, um, the role of government and how government can play an important role in in facilitating that that cross sectoral working. So that might be something that we can explore in our discussion. And, and of course, it's really, really great to hear that you hear you reiterate the importance of community and putting community at the centre of our thinking and programme design. So those those are the things that really, really resonated from what you shared. Thank you very much, Nathan. Um, and obviously, we're happy to take questions for him and any of our panelists at any point, and we'll feed those to the panelists at the, at the, during the Q and A session. And now. I'm really excited to be able to welcome to our virtual stage Ella Dizen, Senior Grants Manager at Maristops Madagascar. And Ella, Ella is going to be talking about how to reach the hardest to reach with health services and how best to leverage health environment partnerships to do that. Over to you, Ella. 
Thank you, Vic. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so, uh, what we would like to emphasize here is the importance of partnership, as Natinaina said, the importance of uh, collaboration between uh, environment and uh, between organizations working on environment and uh, sexual reproductive health. Next slide, please. A uh, brief uh, background about uh, Mary Stops Madagascar. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've been uh, implemented in Madagascar since 1992. And uh, in order to, to enable us to, to serve all population from the urban area to the most uh, remote areas population, we, we are covering the 22 regions in Madagascar. Uh, and uh, for that, we, we, are, we have uh, what we call the service delivery channels. Those are the means that uh, we, we use in order to reach the population. So uh, currently we have uh, fixed centers and maternities in total 10, uh, 22 outreach team. Those are teams who, who, who travel from uh, one site to another one, identifying site to the remote areas, uh, and they are using vehicles for that. And similarly, we have also what we call the single providers outreach. They work um, like the outreach team, but those are uh, individual providers. And uh, they also identify sites and they go from one site to another one to serve the population. We collaborate also with uh, public sector. And uh, currently, we work with uh, 93 public sector, and uh, they, we call them a public sector strengthening. So we provide them for training so that they are able to provide family planning services. Uh, and uh, last one, we have what we call the referral network providers. Those are private providers to whom we provide trainings as well, capacity building so that they can offer uh, sexual and reproductive health services. Next, uh, sorry, uh, as we can see, uh, Madagascar mapping, uh, you can, the, the two arrows here uh, are, uh, are uh, referring to the sites where we work with uh, Blue Ventures in the northern, northern part of Madagascar. We will talk further about, uh, about this in the, in the following slide. Next slide, please. So, uh, we, as I said, we are covering uh, uh, 22 regions, the 22 regions in Madagascar, but we will talk here about the north regions, in the north region in Madagascar. So, mainly, uh, whom are we partnering with? Uh, so specifically, uh, we partner with organizations that might be like PHE, Population Health Environment uh, Organizations, or other organizations like uh, Women Association, for example. So in the North regions, we, we partner with Preventors, with Madagascar National, Madagascar National Park, with Lemur Conservation Fund. And we also partner, we work closely with the Ministry of Population, with Women Association. Uh, in order to to reach the, the same uh, the same goals, next slide, please. Talking about the Aspire project, so the the, aim, the objectives of uh, this uh, project is to to improve services, uh, make available the services SRH services, and also integrate the sexual reproductive health within. Um, resilient climate change affected communities. Next slide, please. So what are the pilot activities in northern part of Madagascar? Uh, as I said before, as I mentioned, so we collaborate closely with uh, Blue Ventures in the northern part of Madagascar. Challenge there is that um, there is a uh, marine, uh, marine biodiversity uh, is very, high there, though there is a lack of income ge generating in, uh, activities, bringing people to over, over exploit the resources, natural resources there. As a, contact, as a result of, uh, of a study that, uh, uh, that has been conducted within Aspire, Aspire project as well, is that in this, uh, in this region, men seem to have more control on women and also, but we are disengaged in SRH, uh, 
uh, uh, component. Uh, as um, uh, according to demographic health survey and the WHO as well, the mortality, the contraceptive uh, prevalence rate is still very low. And uh, also that that means there are still a lot of unmet needs to be covered. And this is still a challenge for all of us. Next slide, please. So what is uh, the partnership uh, within, uh, within uh, Aspire project that we conducted in the northern part of Madagascar? So we collaborate closely with uh, Blue Ventures. The collaboration between Blue Ventures and Maristos Madagascar is in the sense that Blue Venture teams, uh, including their mobilizers, they would sensitize, they would identify sites, and they would sensitize the community about uh, disaster risk management and integrating the sexual and reproductive health component. So they would, uh, they will, um, on a regular basis, every two months, PV teams uh, uh, share their planning to Maristops Madagascar to the two single provider outreach working in this area. And they would travel um, to the identified site to offer uh, services to the to the target group, meaning the fishers uh, in the coastal uh, uh, coastal bay at uh, Timipeke Bay, especially. And our teams, our single providers, uh, outreach team, provide family planning and uh, SRH uh, related services in this area. Next slide, please. So, what are the results from this uh, collaboration? Uh, here I'm talking only uh, about the Aspire uh, project uh, result, meaning from August to end of November. So we could uh, serve uh, 269 uh, uh, clients. Uh, this means uh, uh, among uh, the population size in Timipaka Bay, it uh, means that uh, unmet needs are still very high. Uh, 20, 20, uh, 25 of population were, uh, were, sensitized, were sensitized and 4% uh, of uh, women of uh, reproductive health have been served. That brings us to, to say that uh, there are still a lot to do, challenges, and uh, that justifies the fact that we still need to, to continue the collaboration. And even though uh, the project has been ended in uh, November, we continue to collaborate with uh, Blue Ventures uh, team uh, uh, in the same way that the Blue Ventures team and uh, mobilizers sensitize the community and uh, as, uh, uh, sensitize people about uh, about SRH, integration of SRH, and our team, our single provider outreach team come uh, along with uh, Blue Ventures team to the areas uh, by uh, sea, sea, sea transportation, for example, or working, working uh, for a long distance to reach the population, to, uh, to reach the targeted population. Next slide, please. So what uh, what ha what have you learned from this? I would uh, I would uh, say uh, the key key words here would be partnership, uh, the the importance of partnership, and also expertise. Each organization is bringing its expertise in order uh, to to reach the same goals. So that means that complementarity is also a key word here. And uh, together, uh, we, we, are, uh, we, are we are trying to achieve, to reach the same objectives, and also to, to serve the population uh, in Madagascar, mainly those hard to reach. Uh, this uh, ends my presentation. Uh, back to you, Vic. Thank you. Ella, thank you. That was a beautiful description of, uh, of what, I what I'd like to think of a collaboration in action. Um, you know, it was, it was lovely to hear you describe how, you know, how Blue Ventures and Maritimes Madagascar are, true, are working truly collaboratively with the Blue Ventures team, doing the sensitization work and laying the, laying the foundations for the single provider outreach to provide sexual reproductive health services. A couple of things sprang to mind in, in your summary there. What, you know, this idea of, um, of of complementarity, but underpinning that is, I think, is a respect for each other's expertise. 
You know, there's that mutual respect that each brings something to the table that the other doesn't have. And through that, only through that can we achieve our, our shared goals, our shared objectives for the communities, whether it's reaching the hardest to reach, whether it's rebuilding fisheries, whether it's um, building community resilience. So it's a beautiful illustration. Thank you so much, Ella. And now I'm looking forward to hearing more about the process. Delighted to, to have with us Elisa, Elisa Urbanianos, the Senior Strategic Advisor for Think Play Senegal. And Elisa will be talking about optimizing collaboration across sectors. Lessons learned from the Aspire Consortium. Over to you, Elisa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vic. Thank you also, Ellen and Tanaina, for those great presentations that are going to make my presentation way easier. And uh, well, just to say that I'm very happy to be here speaking on behalf of all the Think Place team that have been very involved in uh, this long process and intense, intense process. And yeah, as you were saying, I'm going to talk about the effective collaboration and try to explain a bit how the principles of uh, effective collaboration were uh, put in place for this uh, project. So as Nantenein and Ella already mentioned, uh, Aspire was supposed to be a longer project that uh, was cut a little bit. So it was supposed to have two main phases, the call design and implementation phase. And uh, as Ella was uh, specifying, we've been working very intensely during the close-up phase, which was uh, mainly during the months of July until December. So at that point, what we had to do was changing a little bit our way of working and also the goals and objectives of our partnership. So once the closure was announced, what we did was sitting together and uh, carrying out our situational analysis to see where we were at and how could we use human-centered design, our approach, to strengthen the capacity of the teams and also to leave the best uh, results uh, and heritage for the, for the communities above all. So we analyzed the four activities that uh, PHI and MSI Madagascar were supposed to carry out together and and then we thought together how to use this HCD approach. Um, for those who are not familiarized with this HCD uh, approach, um, we are going to explain you briefly what it is about. Um, the human-centered design of HCD is a creative approach, is a very participatory and collaborative tool. Uh, what you see on the left uh, is the diamond model, which is supposed to be how it looks, is like, let's say, the formal way we represent the way of working. Like, we come from uh, the diverging part where we gather all the information, when where we listen to the experience of participants, everyone who's involved in the project, because the main characteristic of this approach is that we put the human experience, so feelings, fears, experiences, expectations in the center of uh, the research, the co-design, all the phases. Then we analyze all the information that we have and we go to the converging part when it's uh, when we can innovate, when we can design and we, when we identify key learnings or insight that allow us to uh, refine, test and, and propose innovative solutions. But what you see on the right part is like the, the real representations so of the left would be the former one and the, the right would be like the, the real one. We, let's say, part from the, we start at a messy point and we try to clear things uh, together to get to an aligned or shared understanding and, and final call design solutions. How did we apply this human-centered design uh, approach uh, to this uh, project, to this Aspire. Uh, it's specifically with the, the colleagues of Madagascar, as you can imagine, it's, it's been very easy because of the great human and professional quality. Uh, you've listened to Ellen and Tenaina, and uh, they've already talked about the importance of uh, putting on the table the older organization's expertise and also the importance of having a shared understanding of what we were doing and what we wanted to achieve together. 
So uh, for the four different activities that we, so previously what we did first of all for all the activities was having intent, what we called intent discussions, like sitting together, analyzing where we were at and make sure that we all had the same understanding and that we were all seeking the same goals. Then we thought about the activities also because uh, it's been a challenging collaboration because of time differences. We've been working together from the UK, from the USA, from uh, Senegal, from Madagascar, even from Australia. So yeah, flexibility is something very important, is a great added value uh, for, from the ATD approach, but also teams have to be willing to be flexible and adapt. And then the final stage of all the activities has been the core design and validation, meaning that we put all the stakeholders and partners together to make sure that all the voices were heard and took into account. And then all the ideas were jointly validated to make sure that we were all moving in the same direction. Um, after this, what we got uh, were a set of recommendations on how to work together. Next slide, please. Uh, and already I talked about those recommendations. I'm not going to go into detail. The only thing uh, I want to mention is that those recommendations were co-designed and validated with the main stakeholders and partners. And uh, I would like to highlight this quote saying that understanding the integrated approach that was one of the main goals of this project uh, in the right framework was critical and took time and dedicated to, to ensure that the programs and activities that were being implemented as a part of the project reflected that at the end of the day, that was a good model. Uh, this is a quote from one of the, the team members. And uh, that's also the essence of the ATD approach and it's been a bit the essence of this collaboration. Like we wanted to make sure that we were all on the same page and we were respecting each other's expertise and areas of uh, working and understanding of all the partners. Another product that we delivered was, uh, let's say, a studio, like a, a report on ways of working together, lessons learned, uh, because this has been a big, very big um, consortia. And as I was saying, partners from different countries, different realities, different uh, fields of working. So we produce this um, final lessons learned report that is going to be available soon online. Um, and I would like to, in the next slide, show you uh, what we found as uh, specific pitfalls or obstacles uh, to work together in an innovative way and also which are the solutions or the ways to avoid those pitfalls. Because uh, one of the characteristics supposed to be the uh, main one of this consortium was uh, finding innovative ways to work together, but you always tend, like, because you run out of time, because it's difficult, because of uh, the challenges in the field, and because you have also other projects to, to carry out, um, you sometimes work based on assumptions or based on previous experiences. Um, so here you have those five uh, pitfalls that we identified and also the ways we co-designed on the go to avoid them. Uh, and that's been a real collaborative way, but also the HCD was facilitating this because we were all the time checking, like, where are you at? How are you feeling? How is it going? Do we have to adapt? Do we have to change any activities? So after this, I would also like to show you uh, on a graphic way, the opportunities or the principles that we use that really made easy uh, to have an effective collaboration. I think this is something that we learned from this Aspire consumption, but that can be used in any further uh, collaborative experience. First of all, we imagine together, we try to think big together, we try to put it uh, in, in, in a real way, like try to implement what we thought. Then we took a time to stop, to reflect, uh, to see what was worth it to be maintained and what had to be adapted and changed. Uh, and then I think this is the last phase where we are now. We really want to 
reinforce the partnership and create lasting partnerships. We need to carry forward those innovative thinking ways uh, for implementation of innovative projects, activities, uh, as Ellen and Denena were saying, to reach the most difficult communities to reach and really to integrate uh, innovative, not just ways, ways of working together, but also uh, solutions uh, to yeah, put together as a rate and conservative uh, efforts for resilience. Thank you very much. Over to you, Vic. Thank you, Elisa. Um, wonderful to hear your wonderful to hear your description of, of the process, and and it was really wonderful to have your expertise shepherding us through this through this through the whole project. Um, and you know, just seeing some of the things that you mentioned, for example, you know, the pitfalls of of, of trying to work in a consortium when you're trying to innovate or trying to find innovative ways of working. I would love to have access to that document just to remind myself of not falling into those old traps. To, and really make sure we're thinking about how to work most effectively collaboratively. So perhaps something that we could share with the with the attendees afterwards, if that would be okay. Thank you so much, Elisa. We now have time for questions. So if anyone has questions that, that have been coming up as we've presented, then please do put them into the chat, either on YouTube um, or as a question here on Airmeet. And we have a first, we have a first question. Um, a question for uh, 99er, and I'm happy to jump in if if that would be helpful. But for 99er, what evidence does Blue Ventures have that integrating health services has supported communities to respond to climate-related shocks? Uh, <clears throat> thank you for the question. Uh, in terms of evidence, uh, what I know is um, Blue Ventures is conducting um, like a um, like the integrated uh, social survey, for example, to identify um, some uh, impact result of uh, the various program. Um, and uh, in some way as well, the testimonies from community shows um, that the, the health, integrating health program is um, have more impact, direct impact compared to uh if we say uh like uh environmental or conservation program if you if measure the impact of of the program health is more direct have more uh we say uh on the daily life of uh, the population the communities and that can push them to be more engaged uh to uh communities uh, uh to uh, conservation initiatives and that is the, the importance of making the link uh, between uh, the health and conservation. Um, yeah, Vic, if you have more uh, details you want to share as well. Thanks, Nathan. Maybe I'll come back to that. I've just seen a question for Ella, which actually builds on this. Um, so Ella, um, what's your perception of how health and environment programs contribute to community resilience? Uh, thank you. Uh, talking about uh, about uh, climate change uh, resilience uh, resilience uh, communities, uh, based on our experience uh, through partnership with the PHE PHE organizations, uh, we 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 think that um, integrating uh, the health health, uh, the sexual reproductive uh, health uh, within, uh, within uh, resilience, within climate change uh, system is, uh, is, uh, is uh, how to say that, is uh, um, effective uh, in, the, in the way that um, the, for, for mobilizers, for example, they would sensitize the community on uh, on uh, the impact of uh, climate change, the economical impact, as well as the impact of uh, of uh, reproductive health. For um, uh, you know, uh, having uh, having uh, a huge uh, size of population would uh, have impact on uh, on the climate. 
uh, climate uh, climate system. So integrating this uh, uh, sexual and reproductive health within 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 these uh, components is just like a co complementarity with uh, all of these uh, all of these uh, components, meaning for climate change and resilience and uh, and uh, and uh, maybe in uh, in some regions also uh, gender based uh, violences. Great, thank you, yeah. thank you, Ella. Um, and just building on what you've what you've shared there, you know, um, um, there is evidence, but that but by the realization of sexual reproductive health and rights, you know, we, we may be contributing to building the the resilience and adaptive capacity of women in communities, um, and facilitating greater engagement in, in climate action. So there is some evidence on that, and and coming back to. Blue Ventures own experience. Um, it's nine years almost to the day when Cyclone Haruna hit the southwest coast of Madagascar. It was the worst cyclone in, in living memory um, at the time. And um, and the, the, anyway, it, it um, caused huge um, it caused huge infrastructure damage, it caused loss of life to, for the fishing communities that are living in that part of Madagascar. And it was and but the community response to, to the cyclone was spectacular. The, the way that community health workers worked closely and in collaboration with the with the management committee of the locally managed marine area to 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 identify where the greatest need was, to, to direct resources and support to where it was most needed, to product to conduct um, public health education about minimizing the impact of the cyclone for the community was amazing. And it was that integrated multi-sectoral response we saw at the community level, the, you know, combining the response of community health workers with the response of the, the local management committee of the marine, um, marine protected area was a really powerful example of how that integrated approach really supported the community to respond to that to, to that really horrific cyclone and um, and as we see you know Madagascar being hit by cyclones again now you know we just hope that that that, that those communities are able to respond in that sort of multi sectoral way again um, any other questions for anybody oh hang on there's a there's a question on a question on the screen just give me one second uh, sorry, bear with me. Oh, here we are. I'm sorry about that. Um, a que another question for Ella. Have you seen any rejection of the birth control services provided, such as distrust of the medication of, or pro-life views? If so, how much do you think this impacts how many people volunteer for the service? Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, Further, uh, for our uh, experience, in the, I, I would uh, talk uh, maybe only uh, about the, the, the activities in the northern part of uh, Madagascar, meaning the collaboration with uh, Preventers team. Uh, so far, um, uh, uh, I think uh, because of uh, the collaboration is already strong set in place uh, that uh, we we don't really i'm not sure that there is a there is a rejection or a objection from the communities uh, as i said maybe because because the collaboration is already set in place and strong that uh, the mobilizers you know it, it depends on the way how you talk to the communities it depends on the the counseling that you provide to the to the communities and uh, uh based on uh, based on this based on the way how you how you how you talk to people how you try to convince people about the impact of this integration of uh, of uh, sexual and reproductive uh, health within uh, resilient um, uh, climate change uh, communities uh, people seem to be uh, to be to be uh, how to say that they they they, they don't uh, i'm not sure that uh, they reject but uh, they, they are uh, they are uh, they 
they listen, they, they are receptive to, to the mobilizers, to the, to the, to the counseling that uh, providers and mobilizers are, are providing to them. I don't know if uh, I would have uh, something to, uh, to add, but I think it, uh, it, uh, it's because, uh, because of a strong collaboration between, uh, between the organizations on one side. The, the PHU organization bringing their expertise on uh, on sensitizing people on uh, climate change on uh, risk uh, uh, disaster management on integrating the, the uh, sexual reproductive health component and on other side the providers the service of uh, the family planning uh, service providers. Uh, come in along with a PHE team to offer the services to the community. So I think uh, based on this uh, strong collaboration, but it's not really a rejection, but uh, I think uh, it it, it all depends on the way how you counsel people, how you how you sensitize the community. Thank you. Thank you, um, Ella. And just to reconfirm, um, the, the approach we take is very much about upholding people's rights, um, rights to a livelihood, rights to um, rights to a healthy environment, rights to um, rights to health, including rights to reproductive health. So it's this, we take a very much a rights-based approach across all the different sectors within which we work, and and as we and as a result of that we have experienced relatively little, if any, resistance because we are meeting needs, upholding rights. Um, I believe there's a question for Elisa. Uh, Elisa, is there anything that you learned about the ways of working or processes that partners that surprised you and that that you could incorporate into our, into our HCD process? Okay, so thank you for the question. Um... And actually, it's a very good one because this this has been a very intense but very successful uh, partnership. And what really surprised me, and I think that I'm also again uh, talking in on behalf of the team, is how so different organizations with so different methodologies and uh, context and also final goals were able to work together to adapt to each other needs. And, and ways of working and even ways of understanding uh, concepts. Uh, there was a real willing to work together. I really think this is something that has been helped by the HCD approach, but also our way of working, our way of using HCD has been uh, really improved thanks to this experience because all the partners, I remember the first sessions uh, like in, er, final ending of 2020, they were completely different to the ones we had uh, in the closeout phase. So really the capacity to adapt and to be flexible, to respect each other's expertises and, 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 and knowledge, that was, that, that was an amazing experience. Lovely, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. I have a question now for... Um, to Nantanana and to Ella both, um, I see that the main approach to health collaborations have been towards sexual and reproductive health. Have you foreseen any other health partnerships? Uh, I will take the question first. Uh, yes, for this uh, project, uh, there was a big focus on the sexual and reproductive health. But the PHE approach health environment program is, um, the approach is very flexible and that makes the, the approach very beautiful. This is, uh, this is, a, com this is a listening to community needs and uh, we can adapt according to the context. Uh, so uh, there is an over component like um, maternal child health, like nutrition, uh, access to water, hygiene, uh, sanitation. So. All of that are part of the component of uh, population health environment approach. But what you have seen on this uh, project is focused more on sexual and reproductive health. But of course, uh, as we said, uh, we are uh, responding to community needs and uh, working this is approach, human-based approach, right? And uh, right approach. And uh, 
we, when we know we identify the need of communities, we respond to that. So if there is need, for example, of livelihood diversification, partners are working on that. If there's an over health component, if the nutrition component is really um, uh, need to be focused, so there is partners around nutrition. nutrition. Yeah. Thank you. Hope that's respond to the question. Thank you, Nathan. I couldn't have put it better myself. Ella, anything to add to that? No, I think uh, Nathanael has uh, covered uh, this uh, question. So just to to yeah, just to to reinforce that uh, from our uh, end, so Marie Stops Madagascar is uh, mainly working on uh, on uh, sexual and uh, reproductive. Uh, Health, but as uh, Nathaniel said, uh, you know uh, this this is a big system, including uh, nutrition, wash, uh, water security, uh, integration of uh, of uh, sexual and uh, reproductive uh, health. I think uh, has it might have uh, impact on uh, all of this. Yeah, so just to complement what uh, Natalena has said. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Ella. So another, another question for Elisa. Um, how do you identify which stakeholders to be involved in the human-centered design process? Um, I would say that uh, the most important point to identify stakeholders would be uh, think big, like uh, using disruptive way of, of thinking, not just stick to what would be the regular or the formal stakeholders to take into account, but also try to understand the context like and, and hear the voices of all the partners, people, agents involved in the problematic that you are focusing in. And so thinking big, thinking on a disruptive way and also listening, like co-designing. Uh, asking the partners, who do you think should be there? Uh, who do you think is missing? Like listening to all, putting all the partners together is, is key to identify the stakeholders. Thanks, Elisa. And when you put it like that, it sounds, sounds really simple, but these are things that I think can be easily forgotten. Um, final question for Antinina. Um, what conservation impacts um, has Blue Venture seen as a result of this holistic approach? Yeah, in terms of uh, conservation impact, um, I think this is kind of related to the first question as well. Uh, if we talk about conservation, uh, there is the, the, the engagement of communities in the, the activities uh, on part of the conservation uh, fisheries project, for example. Um, when there is this engagement, the communities are, uh, it's easy to bring them to the uh, to the conservation activities, and I think that's uh, that's a big, huge impact that make can make the difference. If we make a comparison of a single, um, we mean like a single approach on conservation compared to a holistic approach, there is a difference between the the, the result mainly, and uh, from what I know as well, for example. Um, uh, in an implementation site, for example, uh, if if conservation like blue ventures wanted to implement to a new sites, the health component was opening the door to the conservation to be able to implement to the sites. So that's kind of really the, one of the impact of uh, integrating the health to the conservation. Thanks, Nathan. I love that idea of health opening the door to engagement. And that's what we see. We see broadened, strengthened engagement to community, um, in engagement with community-based conservation and more inclusive engagement. Thank you, Nathan. We have time for one final question, and that's for Ella. Um, do MSI choices have similar partnerships with conservation groups in other countries beyond Madagascar? Yeah, thank you. Uh, quickly, I would say that uh, Marie Stops International Reproductive Choices uh, are operating within uh, within uh, approximately forty country programs. Uh, Marie MSI Madagascar is one of the country programs, uh, and uh, here we are partnering with uh, with uh, conservation groups. And for sure, uh, other country programs are doing this kind of partnership with uh, with. Uh, 
conservation groups via the MSA country programs. Similarly, yeah. thank you. Thank Thanks, Ella. And, and definitely, um, wherever Blue Ventures um, goes in its work with marine conservation, if we are keen to, um, if we've identified an need for sexual reproductive health services, we always look to see if MSI choices are in our in country because they've been such a wonderful partner for us in, in Madagascar. Right. Um, thank you all to, to our panelists for fantastic presentations and for really skillful responses to, to those interesting questions. We're now going to move into into breakout groups. Um, so we're going to have breakout group sessions. To join a breakout group, all you need to do is to find a seat at the table which matches the language group you wish to join. To do this, click a seat next to the table of your choice. Because of attendance constraints, the tables will prioritize a specific language, but our facilitators will help support translation if needed. We have 25 minutes for discussion and your session will be will start once the table is filled. And so this is an opportunity for you to share your own experiences of multi-sector programming, like, like these health environment partnerships, and to make sense of what's been shared and work out how much of this can be applied to your own work. So, so please do stick around, please do join a, a breakout room. We won't be asking the groups to feedback at the end. This is really for you to, to join the discussion and to make sense of what you've heard today. So I do hope you stick around and you enjoy the breakout sessions.